You know, Chris, uh, the game has changed so much, uh, you know, the last five years, 10 years, 20 years, uh, reliance on spin rates and numbers. I mean, what is your philosophy as a GM? Are you are you more old school? Are you a, an analytic guy? How, how, how's your philosophy? Uh, I'd say right in the middle, honestly. I think that, um, you know, I think that I don't think it has to be either or. I think that, you know, as I describe it, it's all information. And I think for every decision you want you make, you want as much information as possible. You have to synthesize the information and decide what the most important aspects are and then make the decisions. But I think that ultimately we want that balance between, um, you know, I hate calling it old school because it's, it's, it's really um, – you know, it's traditional baseball eyes and scouts and um, their ability to evaluate sometimes things that are not quantifiable and then uh, merging that with the analytics and um, things that are quantifiable and making the best decisions possible based on that. And that's what the top organizations do. That's what we're striving to do. And, and uh, I'm very pleased with the progress we've made. How have you and John like handled the, the 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 duties, the separation, you know, in terms of who's responsible for this, who's responsible for that? Because it's the waters are muddied when you get into, you know, John's been doing this with this personnel role for years, and now they bring you in. How have you guys handled the duties? Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I don't think we've really divided and conquered yet. I mean, maybe on some small things, but JD has been unbelievable in mentoring. Um, really throwing so many different aspects of the job at me, walking me through things um, and, and helping me understand kind of the way he's done things in the past and giving me the freedom to, to pivot off that and uh, kind of change or reshape some of the, some of the processes or systems that we have. So I, I really, I, I can't speak enough about JD and the way he's handled this and how he has, um, you know, done his best to bring me along. I, I certainly say that he's doing most of the work right now and I'm along for the ride um, because he's he, he really is impressive with what he's able to manage and how well he does it, the, the time, the effort, um, his people skills. He, it's really impressive. And uh, I'm very grateful for his leadership and, um, and partnership in this role. New Rangers GM Chris Young here on Sean and RJ 105.3 The Fan. With the season around the corner, Chris, what, what are some of the reasons that you think Ranger fans should be excited for this team and what you guys are trying to build? Well, look, I think it's no secret as to where we are uh, coming off a very difficult season last year, um, You know, four losing seasons in a row. Uh, I get the frustration Ranger fans have. I certainly, I've been a Ranger fan. I, I know it. I, I empathize. I, I feel the same frustrations. And, um, you know, for me, the exciting part of this is that we are building a, a young nucleus um, that is going to be, you know, they're, they're going to be uh, championship players at some point. And, and getting behind these players, watching them develop, watching them grow, watching them bring an energy, a passion, a, an underdog mentality to the ballpark night in, night out, and, and competing. And, um, you know, it's going to happen quickly. Um, in a couple of years, the Ranger fans are going to look up and say, wow, that, you know, this has been fun to watch. And, um, you know, just having the fans support and getting on board with where we are and supporting these young guys, they need it. And they're going to be really, really good players. And, um, you know, I, I'm very excited about it. I've seen it in other places. I know it. I know how it happens. And uh, I, I look forward to watching this, this happen here as well. Who is a part of the nucleus that you're excited you're, that you're so excited about, and that you think will will help turn this team into a contender in a few years? Well, look, I think it starts with um, you know with a couple of the younger guys that uh, have established themselves in the past couple seasons at the big league level. Um, uh, Kiner at shortstop now, um, his leadership, the intangibles, the effort, the intensity that he brings day in day out, the example he sets for his teammates. I mean. His natural leadership qualities are off the chart, and I think that that sets the tone for the franchise in a lot of ways. Um, you know, certainly, um, you know, we have Joey, who has shown unbelievable leadership as well. His work ethic, his commitment to really buying into what we're doing, the culture, um, the just what he provides in terms of that. He made himself a Gold Glove outfielder. That, that also represents the Ranger way and what we want to establish, what we want our young guys to aspire to be. Um, you know, Jose Trevino, his natural leadership qualities, same thing, um, certainly. And, and look, all these players have room for growth in terms of their uh, baseball abilities. Um, but it's the, the, the personal aspects, the leadership things uh, that, that really matter, that set the example, and it helps other people buy in. And so, you know, in center field, um, Leone Tavares and Eli White are two young players with a lot of talent. Uh, we've seen some progress with both of them this spring. It's been really, really fun to watch. First base, Nate Lowe, who we traded for from Tampa, um, 
just really, really innate ability to hit the baseball. And, um, you know, he's gotten off to a little bit of a slow start this spring, but, you know, we can see it's there and we're excited to watch him mature and develop into a really good player. And then the group of players right behind them that we have on the way, it's really exciting. You know, Josh Young just uh, had foot surgery yesterday, but he is uh, one of our top prospects. And um, we expect him back about the time the minor league season opens up. And, um, you know, our expectation is if all goes smoothly, Josh will be playing in Arlington sometime this summer. And he is a really, really solid player. We have Davis Wenzel is another young player, uh, infielder, who, who can just flat out play his um, – his understanding and discipline of hitting is pretty impressive. Uh, it really stands out. Um, uh, you know, our, our first round pick last year, Justin Foscue, um, has been tremendous. Nick Solak is another one I forgot. I forgot to mention at second base. There is a young core here that we're establishing, and there's another group right behind that group as well uh, that'll be at Double A Frisco. And um, you know, there's some really good arms in that group. And then lastly, you know, where we pick in the draft this year with the number two overall pick. Um, it really, we've got a chance to access a marquee player uh, who, who will be here for a long time and will help us win championships. So I think all things considered, that kind of sums up the young group and, and where we are. And I probably omitted a couple names I should have added, but and we'll probably have a few surprises as well that sneak up and, and jump into that group this season. Rangers general manager Chris Young join us here at 105 through the fan. Uh, there were so many things I want to go uh, with that, but you mentioned the number two pick. So I'm just going to come out. How many Vanderbilt games have you watched this year? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have not attended any Vanderbilt games, and uh, but certainly we're keeping a close eye. We're doing a ton of draft prep work. Um, so we, we've really spent a lot of time on the draft. I, I think that we've got our eyes on a number of different players, and we just want to see how the spring plays out. But there's no secret that – um, you know, what those Vanderbilt pitchers have done uh, really um, thus far in their spring season, it's been pretty impressive and eye-opening. I mean, you don't, like, at, at number two, you don't get your, your pick of the litter. Like, there's one that's going to be gone. But do you have a pretty good idea of who's going to go number one and, and then basically who you're deciding between? Well, look, I think we have a pretty good idea of what the top of the draft is going to look like. How that plays out over the next several months is still um, yet to be determined. And I think that, you know, we'll keep a close eye on all of these guys. We're not going to eliminate anybody, um, but I think that it will become a little bit self-selecting as the uh, spring and, and as we get into summer with the way these guys perform. You know, uh, um, they're just different aspects of this that will sort of play out, and you need time to play out. But without being able to really see, without some of these players not playing last season, it's really important. We have scouts all over the country right now canvassing, um, you know, every high school and college uh, baseball game looking for, for the top talent in the draft. We will know who they are, and we will select the right one. I, I, you know, you mentioned, like, the last year wiping out the college season. It also wiped out the minor league season. How much do you think that hurt the development of some of the younger guys that are already within the organization? Well, look, um, as with everything this past year, nothing has been ideal, um, and, and so – everybody's in the same boat with that. I'm not going to make excuses. It's equal across the board, across the industry. I will say that our player development group has done a tremendous job of um, keeping these players in shape, um, making sure that they were able to simulate as much baseball as possible in their home environments. And then when they had the opportunity, getting them into instructional league this fall uh, to really work with them and then carrying that through the winter into the spring. So um, there are no excuses. The player development, it, it certainly suffered as a result of the pandemic, but um, you know, that's true across the board. It, it, every team is equal in that regard. How many of these guys have recognized you from your playing days? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I don't know. I, it's actually kind of funny. The guys have been, um, first of all, they've been unbelievable. We have a great group of people, and it's been really fun to get to know all of them. Um, you know, certainly some of them I, I played with, some of the guys that are in big league camps, some of the younger guys. Um, you know, my career started almost before they were uh, they were born, so <laughs> right after they were born. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much they remember me or if they remember me at all, but I, I do know that that uh, – you know that that window closes quickly, and so I'm I'm now uh, just a has been for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, when you were evaluating this job, and now that you've been in it for a little bit now, and you're you're, you're there up close to spring training, what what was an area or a few areas where you're like, you know what, I see this as an issue. I can really help here. I can I can be a contributor here. This is something that I think. Uh, that we're lacking in, that I can help us get better in. What was an area or a few areas uh, that you identified uh, now that you're in this job right now? 
Oh, look, I think the most obvious area um, is pitching development. I think it's something the Rangers have never really done well, um, and that's not an indictment on anybody. That's just simply a fact that, um, you know, as you compare that to major, the rest of Major League Baseball, we have not developed our own pitchers, and uh, it, it's an area that I understand greatly. It's an area I'm spending a ton of time right now, and, uh, and really I'm excited about the progress. Um, I, I think as an outsider looking in, I expected it to be a complete overhaul and makeover of, of that uh, side of PD. Um, there are some really good things in place. There are some really good coaches in place. Some of the things that they are doing uh, are things that I had in mind, and they've you know gotten there in the last couple of years. So I think that they've got a little bit of head start as compared to what I expected coming in. Very excited about it, but certainly it can be enhanced, and that's that's uh, something we have to do if we're going to be a successful franchise and win championships. We have to develop our own pitching. Uh, so it, it will be a primary focus. It has been a primary focus, and um, and we're going to get there. So this question is always asked whenever you have a co-something situation, as, mm. as you and J.D. appear to have right now. If, if there's a big decision or a big trade and J.D. says yes and you're thinking no, who wins? <laughs> Ray Davis. <laughs> oh, Ray Davis. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so he'll be no, the tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is uh, this is one of the great aspects of the job is that JD and I, it's a partnership, and we're not going to agree on everything. We haven't agreed on everything, but we have a, a very constructive process in place uh, by which we, we go through um, and, and take the information. We talk about different aspects of it, and, and certainly I lean on his, um, his experience in terms of management and, and 15 years on the job, and he leans on mine in terms of baseball experience and what it means to a team and culture and stuff like that, and Ultimately, we, nothing that we have not seen eye to eye on has, has really manifested in um, any significant you know, disagreement or, or just fundamental uh, difference in philosophy. I mean, we get to the same place, and, um, and really I think the public will, will truly never know because we support each other um, no matter what. And, uh, and so for me, that's, you know, that's part of this partnership. And um, like I said, J.D. has been tremendous. There will probably be bigger issues that we are not quite on the same page, but as long as we have a good process we work through. And by the way, J.D. and I are not the sole decision makers. In terms, we, we have the final say, but we have a great group of people that help provide us with information, insight, different, differing opinions that help us get to the right spot. And, um, you know, it's, it's uh, been working great thus far, and I expect it to continue.